everyone welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video we will be discussing about the biomagnification and bioaccumulation what is the difference between both and also we'll be discussing some of the mcqs after we complete the lesson and the link of the pdf is available in the description box so you can click on that link and directly download the pdf so without wasting any time let's get started start with the biomagnification what is biomagnification and then we'll move on to bioaccumulation so to understand what is biomagnification first of all we'll take an example of the aquatic food chain so it starts with the primary producer that is the phytoplankton in case of any aquatic food chain then it they are eaten by the zooplanktons that are very very tiny animals small animals that are known as the zooplanktons further zooplankton is eaten by the small fish small fish is eaten by the large fish and ultimately the large fish is eaten by the fish eating bird so in this case the topmost carnivore is the fish eating bird now we know that as we are moving from first trophic level to the last trophic level the energy is decreasing but what happens to some of the substances that are poisonous to the organisms do they decrease with increasing trophic levels or do they uh, do they increase we'll see this in the next slides now we'll see that there are certain substances that are toxic to the organisms they are not good for the organisms they are poisonous to the organisms for example we are not going to eat any of the fertilizer or we are not going to eat any of the pesticides herbicides or any heavy metal they are not good for us they are toxic to us and they are also toxic to many of the organisms many animals and many plants why because these substances cannot be easily excreted or metabolized these substances are not getting excreted out of our body or they are getting metabol metabolized and used up by our body so what are they doing they are getting accumulated in our body also these toxic substances or poisonous substances are fat soluble if they are water soluble they will be easily excreted out of our body by the process of filtration which is done in our case by the kidneys or in other organisms by different different parts that are there for excretion so if they are water soluble they will be excreted out but these toxic substances are fat soluble and they do not get excreted out or they do not get metabolized as well now what we see here here we'll see a table so the first column says the organism as we have seen the uh, in the previous slide b food chain that we have seen we have just taken those organisms starting with phytoplankton and ending with the fish eating birds now the number of organisms eaten by it or eaten by them right so the phytoplankton will not eat anybody it, it is a producer so it will get any toxic substance through water the toxic substance will enter the phytoplankton or the food chain through water if there is some a toxic substance present in the water it will directly go to the phytoplankton as it is using water to make its food right now the zooplankton will eat the phytoplanktons so the number of phytoplanktons it is eating for example it is eating 10 phytoplanktons in its life then the small fishes they are eating the zooplanktons they are eating 10 zooplanktons then large fishes are eating small fishes and further like this right so we have understood that all of these are eating the number of organisms that are eaten by them are 10 in each case but what is happening to the concentration of the toxic substance for example if a toxic substance for example ddt has entered the the food chain through phytoplanktons right their producers ddt was mixed in water and it entered the food chain through phytoplanktons the concentration in in the case of phytoplankton is 0.01 gram we are just taking the examples just to make you understand right so the concentration that is present in the phytoplankton is 0.01 gram of ddt now the zooplanktons are eating 10 phytoplankton so the amount that is going to the zooplankton is 
10 times the amount that was present in phytoplankton. So it will make it up to 0.1 gram. Same is the case with all of the organisms. So now what we see here is that in birds, that is the fish eating birds, the large fish eating birds, they are having 100 gram of concentration of DDT in their body. So this is how the toxic substances are getting accumulated as we are moving from the producers to the final or the uh, topmost carnivore. Now we will see, I hope you have understood what is biomagnification. Now we will see a definition of biomagnification that is the increase in concentration of harmful substances in the environment as they pass through successive trophic levels in food chain or food web that is the increase in concentration we are knowing that the concentration of the harmful substance or the toxic substance is increasing as we are moving from the producer to the topmost carnivore so it is known as the biomagnification right now we will uh, see how do toxic substances enter the food chain or what are the sources of the toxic substances right from where are they coming from so the fertilizers pesticides herbicides due to agricultural runoff mix in water and enters the food chain or food web this is entering through the aquatic food chain sorry the aquatic producer right into the aquatic food chain and the next one that the toxic substances mixed in soil so it could be mixed because of any of the reasons for example the fertilizers pesticides herbicides or there is some heavy metal that is mixed in soil due to one or the other reason and enters the food chain through the plant root so this is entering into the terrestrial food chain or food web right so there are um, can be two modes one is through the aquatic food chain or food web or uh, through the aquatic producer or through, through the terrestrial producer into the terrestrial food chain or food web now harmful effects of biomagnification we have known that what is biomagnification now is it causing any harm or we are just studying about it so the harmful impacts on the human health we will first consider what are the harmful impacts on human health because we are also the topmost carnivore in the case of many food chains because we are eating a lot of animals and also the plant products so there are kidney problems there could be birth defects health and lung disease heart and lung diseases and also we will be more prone to cancer because heavy metals if they are entering our body or if they are in large concentration in our body they will cause cancer in our body also there could be defects in the nervous system and many of the other systems so it will impact almost all the systems of our body now the second impact is on the aquatic organism so toxins interfere with calcium metabolism in case of birds we are here talking about the large birds that eat the large fishes or that eat the aquatic organisms so toxic whatever toxins that are entering into the food chain or what are whatever toxins are entering into their body finally will interfere with calcium metabolism which leads to thinning of eggshells and premature breaking so the eggshells that are there they are they get thinned and also they are breaked prematurely because they are very thin shelled so they could be broken down due to any of the environmental effects right this results in decline in population of birds so this is resulting in the declination of the population of birds and ultimately if bird population is declined there will be impact on the food chain and food web and ultimately on the ecosystem as well so these are the harmful impacts of biomagnification now we'll move on to bioaccumulation what exactly is bioaccumulation we'll see so it is the increase in concentration of harmful toxins within an organism so in this case in the case of biomagnification we were talking about the accumulation of concentration of toxins when we are moving from one trophic level to the other or into the successive trophic levels but here we are just talking about an organism 
so if the concentration of harmful toxin is increasing into the organism it is known as bioaccumulation bioaccumulation results when the accumulation rate is higher than the removal rate so the toxins could be removed through excretion or they could be utilized by the body through metabolism so when the accumulation rate is more and the excretion rate is less or the metabolism rate is less then only bioaccumulation occurs also bioaccumulation increases with age or time so accumulation of any of the harmful toxin with will increase with age or time as the time passes as the organism is eating up eating up and eating up so the toxins the harmful toxins are getting accumulated in its body so with age the toxins will increase and hence bioaccumulation will increase also bioaccumulation within an organism or within a trophic level bioaccumulation is occurring within an organism we can also we have uh, seen it in the definition we can also say that it happens within a trophic level we are in a in the case of food chains we are considering an organism as the trophic level right so within it happens within an organism or within a trophic level but in case of biomagnification it was occurring in the successive trophic levels now if you have understood all of this let's move on to the mcqs related to this topic so the first mcq is which organism in the food web would contain the highest concentration of chemical pollutants so if there is a chemical pollutant or toxin or poison any of the words could be given in the question if it is there so in which organism of the food chain will it have the highest concentration your options are producers primary consumers secondary consumers and tertiary consumers we have just talked about this it is talking about the bio magnification so the maximum concentration will be in the last trophic level whichever is the last if it is tertiary if it is quaternary consumer then the highest concentration will be in the quaternary consumer so in this case the answer is option number d that is the tertiary consumer next question is if a toxin is introduced in the producer at a concentration of 3 parts per million there is one toxin that is introduced into the producer it gets introduced through the producer only and it is increasing at a rate of 10x that is 10 times for each trophic level what would be the concentration in the tertiary consumer so this question is a bit tricky you just need to be very careful with your calculations so here is the calculation for you in the at the primary stage or at the producer stage the concentration is 3 ppm as we are moving to the next trophic level it is increasing by 10x that is 10 times so 10 times of 3 will be 30 right 10 times of 30 will be 300 and finally we have been asked about the tertiary consumer so here is your answer that is the 3000 ppm you just need to multiply as you are moving to the successive trophic levels so your answer is option number d that is 3000 parts per million the next question is the increase in the concentration of harmful toxins within an within an organism is called what is it called the concentration as the concentration is increasing within an organism we have this read about it it is not biomagnification it is bioaccumulation so the correct answer is option number b bioaccumulation i hope you have understood all the concepts talked about in this video also the mcqs if you have any doubts you can uh, definitely ask in the comment section also share this video with your friends whoever are preparing for the examination and like this video and also subscribe to my channel for more such informative videos thank you so much